Welcome to your Saturday edition of Collider Mailbag. I'm Perry. This is Dennis, and you could obviously watch us right here on Mailbag on the YouTube channel, but we are also in podcast form as well. We are on the Movie Talk podcast, so you can catch Movie Talk and Mailbag in that feed. Check it out. Tell everyone you know about it. You know what else is also part of our podcast network? A little show called Afterthoughts, and I have watched, listened to some Afterthoughts recently. Job guys, what do yeah, you think? What do yeah, you think? I've listened to a couple of episodes and I, I like to hear their perspective. Pretty, pretty insightful stuff, though. I got to yeah. give them some credit for that. So go check all of that out. And as always, today we have five questions to hit, and they came from all over the place from email where you can send us questions, coll- mailbag at collider.com. Not going to screw that up again. You can also get us on Twitter, use the hashtag collider mailbag, Facebook, and Instagram as well. So send questions in to all of those places. Maybe they will be featured on one of these shows today our first question comes via email from schmoes collide who writes hello collider i hope your day is going well wonder woman slash black panther have been compared as being major stepping stones for representation in superhero films but considering black panther completely obliterated wonder woman's opening weekend numbers this got me thinking about captain marvel do you think it's pretty much guaranteed at this point that captain marvel will have a bigger opening weekend than wonder woman considering Considering it has the backing of a more beloved universe and Larson was more accepted when she was cast than Gadot was when she was originally cast. Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, do we want to stick in non-spoiler territory oh, for a minute or I, do you want to just I, jump into it? I need it? to go to spoilers. So, all right, so all right. For you guys watching, if you haven't seen Infinity War, I, I, because it ties directly into why Here's I think... Here's the warning then. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to do, I'll do the stopwatch okay, thing. What, cool. what are we saying? Four minutes? You want to sure. say four minutes right now. All right. So I I'm going to do this for the podcast listeners in four minutes. Just skip ahead if you don't want to hear any Avengers Infinity War spoilers. I am pressing start on the clock now. Okay, so for Captain Marvel, I think originally before Infinity War, it was going to do well. And it probably would have beaten Wonder Woman because I think because of the Marvel brand, right? Everything right now, if it's a Marvel branded, people have faith in it and they will go out and watch it. And especially Disney does a great job about marketing their stuff. But after what happens at the very end of Infinity War, that's like, it just added another like $50 million to its opening box office weekend, yeah. maybe even more because now everyone wants to know, okay, this is directly tied into what we're going to see in infinity war part two or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever they're going to call this movie. And it, it comes out what a month, month and a half before. Yeah. So now everyone knows almost like this is kind of like a, it's not a prequel, but like it definitely has that kind of feel to it. So I think it's going to shoot up way past. I don't think it's going to hit Black Panther opening weekend numbers, but it's going to be very, very mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I, I will agree. I think there is pretty much no doubt that it's going to top Wonder Woman's opening weekend. And I mean, maybe even it's domestic run too, especially when you're just, all right, fr- first from a spoiler story perspective, just in case we run out of time on the spoiler mm-hmm. clock here. So you really can't have a better end credit scene than what they did with one of the biggest, with the biggest opening weekend of all time, the biggest Marvel movie opening, and then at the very end, you tease a future movie. There was no better position for Captain Marvel to be in in that respect. It immediately just creates this must-see that is connected to Infinity War that will ultimately pave the way to Avengers 4. Really, the idea of cross-marketing there is pure genius and no doubt will give Captain Marvel a major boost at the box office. And yeah, the whole idea of representation in superhero films is a big deal right now. And I think that alone is going to drive people to see that movie. Excitement about seeing Brie Larson lead a Marvel movie, Will. And then all of just the continuous build of the MCU story is definitely going to work in its favor as well. If you want to start breaking it down to numbers, so Black Panther, if I'm just talking domestic here for a minute. Black Panther has so far $694 million. Then you could look at Ragnarok and Homecoming that have 315 and 334 million respectively. So then I go to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman made $413 million. Mm -hmm. Considering that 
Black Black Panther is so significantly far ahead of Wonder Woman is making me think that Captain Marvel, no doubt, will surpass that 413. Then when you look at the worldwide totals, that's when you could take Ragnarok and Homecoming and put them back into play because worldwide, both of those movies wound up topping Wonder Woman. So I think mm. worldwide, it, it's game over, hands down, Captain Marvel has this. 413 is a pretty big number, but again, I'm still looking at Black Panther and how successful that was, how successful Infinity War is and will be, and I think that wave is just going to continue rolling. Yeah. So, all right, moving you, on to the you next You got 45 one. seconds. Oh, we have 45 you want, seconds. You wanted the okay, spoiler okay. clock. You wanted yeah, yeah, the spoiler okay. clock. <laughs> I think that if they wanted to, I don't know if they would do this because it, it pretty much would spoil things for people who haven't seen Infinity War, but this will be much further along, but... If they wanted to play in the commercials, just play that end credit scene, that post credit scene in the commercial or the trailer. People know it's directly tied into it and then lead into what Captain Marvel is about. That, I think that would be the most effective one. It might piss off some people Ooh, who haven't yeah. seen it yet, but I think that would be the most effective way. I don't, I think it would be effective. I don't think they would ever do it. Yeah. And that goes back to the marketing issues we were talking about last week. But you know what? We can't talk about that right now because the spoiler clock has officially run out. We are back to Infinity War non-spoiler territory and we are moving on to question two. What is that one, Dennis? That one is from Instagram and it's Film Dom Blog. And he writes, what are your favorite movie credits slash titles? Mine are Wonder Woman, Casino Royale, Catch Me If You Can, 22 Jump Street and Baby Driver. Also, what is the incentive for filmmakers to include such creative credits when it's so much extra work? So the reason that I first picked this question was because I was dying to talk about the uh, the opening uh, title credits for Catch Me If You Can when we were doing our Top 10 Spielberg yes. series. And I think I brought that up. And because, you know, those those videos are only so long, yes. that little bit didn't make it into it. Same and with mine. It's, it is hands down one of my favorite uh, opening credit sequences I've ever seen. The other ones I have on my list is I love the silhouette style of the super bad ones. Mm -hmm. I think that is so well done then i mean deadpool of yes. course deadpool is just fantastic guardians of the galaxy volume 2 with uh, baby groot dancing while everybody else is just getting thrown around and getting beaten up um and then you know you could go into tv too but before i even get to my tv suggestions because i do want to name them the thing that i think all four of those have in common and many more beyond that which kind of answers the second question here is is why would you do that when it's so much extra work because if it's done well one it's memorable and two i think all of these successfully set the the yes. style and the the tone of the movie i mean especially catch me if you can that immediately transports you to kind of that that time period and what frank abagnale is mm. doing in that movie so i think it is well worth the investment to if you're going to use that to set the tone yeah i also had catch me if you can on mine as well and, and yeah we I also talked about the, the intro in the top 10, but also did not make it into that video. Yeah, it's a it's a great like kind of Saul Bass poster inspired beginning. Mm -hmm. And I agree, it's, it's the reason why they do it is they want to set the atmosphere and the mood and the tone. So right after the credits happen, you know kind of what kind of movie you're in for, right? Um, I ha also had Deadpool. Uh, Watchmen. Watchmen had a great one. Watchmen as well. yeah. has one of the best ever. That's such a good call. Yeah, yeah. So I, and then it, it's similar to television shows, right? Yeah. The television shows do it all the time with their. Can I opening. guess what you're gonna pick? Well, no. I mean, one. Well, obviously, Game of Thrones. I knew it. But, yeah. but <laughs> True, True Blood also has a True great, great has a great one, and that was actually all, all that footage is like stock footage that yeah. they found. They did not shoot any of that footage for the introduction, but the music too goes with it, right? Like even simple things like, uh, I don't know, the, the Crown. I watched The Crown on, uh, on Netflix and it's a very short intro, uh, but it has some Hans Zimmer mm -hmm. theme, you know, with some graphics. So yeah, everything, Stranger Things. Yeah, Stranger, Stranger Things. It's not right. a long one, but it, you know, it, the, the music. And it's it, iconic it's, now. Yeah, and it just sets the mood. It's basically the same thing for television. It's Television shows do it all the time. Movies, on the hand, are it's it's less frequent. Yeah, the two TV ones I wrote down. I, I think really, honestly, Game of Thrones is a great one. But I also put a uh, Dexter, which is one of my favorite of all time. And then I'm also really into the Westworld one. Mm. And I do like how they they change certain things from season one to season two. I always find I like when you could find little clues and little differences. Oh, you, you don't watch Silicon Valley, do you? 
Um, I haven't watched past season two. Okay. You, you know, like the intro yeah. is different every time. Yeah, they like yeah, change yeah. like a little tiny thing about it. There's a, there was a little of that happening in Mr. Mercedes, which if you have not watched Mr. Mercedes, it's so good. But there were certain things that would change mm -hmm. each intro that I was enjoying. Yeah. All right. Question number three now. A question from Lucy. Lucy has a spoiler heavy question for Avengers Infinity War. So we've got that clock kicking in again. We are going for five minutes if you're listening on the podcast starting now. Lucy writes, hi, Collider crew, big fan of everything that you do. And I always look forward to getting home from work and watching all the content you provide. My question is, in the Doctor Strange movie, the Ancient One could not see past that moment on the balcony where she dies. She says she can't even see Strange's future, only its possibilities. Do you think that Strange could not? No. Do you think that Strange could actually see past that moment in Infinity War when he turns to dust? Otherwise, how would he know that that was the only way? It's been on my mind since I saw the movie. Thank you for answering my question and keep up the great work. I was surprised this didn't cross my mind sooner. Hmm. Did you think about this? No, I didn't because I think it's been a while since I saw Doctor Strange. So I, I, I do remember that sequence now that that uh, Lucy brings it up. How much time have we got on a spoiler? All right, we got, we've got a little over four minutes. Okay, so for me, the reason why he could is because he's not dead. He, he got turned to dust. I don't think anyone who got turned to dust is actually dead. Everyone theorizes that they are now part of the soul gem mm -hmm. or the soul stone. And so they're not actually dead. And that's why he could see all the different yeah. possibilities uh, for himself. That's exactly where my mind mm -hmm. went to. And, you know, I do think that this is a sign. You know, I don't know if something like this was done super deliberately so that there's a callback in Infinity War, but it is a really nice touch that, you know, even if this didn't cross your mind while you're watching Infinity War, that then you can go back to Doctor Strange mm -hmm. and apply how the Ancient One uses that ability to how we see Strange use it in that big battle in Infinity War. It's a really nice touch. And, you know, I side with you. I think everybody pre-snap is dead. I don't think that the people that faded away into dust are gone for good. And I do think that's why Strange was able to see so many different outcomes, because I think that the final outcome will include him being alive. Yeah. Also, I do think we probably will see the Ancient One in the next movie in some form. Maybe in the Soul Stone or a flashback or something like that. I don't know. I, w I wouldn't mind seeing that. I, we're, we're just past Infinity War, yet we're already getting into the cycle of who is going to pop up in that movie. Oh, of how. course. I mean, we're, I just went down the, uh, the hella rabbit hole with somebody the other day. But the Ancient One is someone that I wouldn't mind seeing come back. Although, you know, I think about where Strange is in mm -hmm. this movie, and especially what Infinity War does for him as a character. Because, you know, we met him in his own movie yes. where he was, you know, new to this yes. whole, the whole ability, the, the mystic arts and all that. But then by the time we saw him in Ragnarok, I had confidence mm -hmm. in him. But in Infinity War in particular, like, he was a force to be reckoned with. He was able to harness that power. And I really believed that, you know, he basically rose to the occasion, took all of that training and really finally got it. And I don't know, for some, for some reason, unless there is some sort of big lesson that maybe the Ancient One can teach him wherever he is right now. I, I just don't want to see him him backtrack. I like seeing him as being one of the most powerful. Well, he is fully invested by we by the time we see him in Infinity War because yeah. the way he talks, it, like Tony's making fun of the way he talks. He didn't talk like that before in, in the, the original Doctor Strange because that was the origin story, and so he just is becoming new to this. He wasn't now. He's he's speaking like like he's been part of this thing for for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. I think they did a, a really good job. Uh, enhancing that character ever since the solo movie and really going back to I can't wait to rewatch that movie I was looking up the the actual quote from the ancient one mm -hmm. when uh, when this question popped up if you're curious in the movie she says I've spent uh, so many years peering through time looking at this exact moment but I can't see past it I've prevented countless terrible futures and after each one there's always another and they all lead here but never further I also love the idea that she says I've pre prevented countless terrible futures which is a Essentially, what hopefully, probably, Doctor Strange yes. has just done with his 14 million plus 
visions and then the one outcome that actually works in our character's favor. All right. It looks like we are out of time. No, All right, we're, we're getting oh, there. Okay. We're getting there. We've got, we've got about 30 seconds. Is there any like a, like a spoiler, you know, itch you've been meaning to scratch uh, in 25 seconds? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just constantly theorizing and changing my mind too. Like we, me and Roke had done a Avengers four theories video. And even from that time, even though I still have a similar thoughts, there's other branches of like, okay, well maybe this will happen or that will happen or, you know, like, especially in terms of like, who, who's going to make that ultimate sacrifice in the next one? Perfect work, Dennis. Right okay. on the dot. We are done with this round of spoilers. And with that, we are moving on to question four. What is it? Okay. On Facebook, Tan Eugene writes, what are your favorite Funko Pop and action figure collections so far? So if anyone knows us. <laughs> I wonder us, why I yes. picked this question. <laughs> so if anyone knows, especially me and Perry probably are the most into getting like uh, cool Funko Pops. Uh, what, what are yours? Uh, well, clearly I like my, my Demogorgon right here. Uh, in terms of all of the series, you know, obviously certain designs that Funko put, puts out are better than others, but it is also directly tied to whatever I'm super into at mm -hmm. the moment. So I obviously love my Ash versus Evil Dead Pops. Those are some of my favorites, Re regardless of uh, resurgence. I still do love my Independence Day Pops. The alien for that <laughs> looks really damn good. I, I'm, surprised, I have a, I'm surprised you bought uh, one from Resurgence. I didn't buy one from Resurgence. Okay. OG, the, OG, the OG Independence. Okay. I I really, I wouldn't buy one from Resurgence. I disliked that movie so much. Uh, Star Wars, I've got a significant amount of Star Wars pops. The recent ones that I really like a lot are the ones they're doing for It. They have so many different Pennywise designs, which... Yes, they it, just come out with so, another one. Yeah, they did. Say. And it's so cool how that ties into the character, too, because, you know, there, there's so many different forms of Pennywise, and the whole purpose of Pennywise is that he can recreate your worst nightmare. So the fact that I have so many different now nightmarish versions of Pennywise is just thrilling to me. The Jurassic Park lineup is rocks solid. That Ian Malcolm one is just genius. And then the most recent one that I'm most excited about is they finally announced a Black Phillip from the Witch Pop, which obviously I will have to have as soon as it's released. Yeah, for me, uh, I, I put two of them here. One is Alex from a Clockwork Orange and Evil Morty. Everyone knows I love Rick and Morty, but I, I had a few others on there that I don't have here. I have uh, I have the hooded Cobra Commander. I also have the Bride from Kill Bill and Voltron. I, you and, love Voltron too. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing too is uh, one of the first ones I ever bought is now worth a lot of money, which oh, is really? Warshack. I mean, not like a ton of money. It's worth 200 bucks. Yeah. So. That's what happens with some of these things. Yeah, yeah. Especially because at that time when I bought it, Funko Pops weren't a thing, mm -hmm. you know, like people bought them, but it wasn't like the mass, like cultural phenomena that it is now. You know, someone as when I was a kid told me Beanie Babies would be worth a lot of money and I bought a whole bunch of that and I'm pretty sure they're worth next to nothing now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, that's, that's what happens with all these toys too. It's like the, I also collect vinyl mations mm -hmm. and some of the vinyl mations that I got early on just cause I thought they were cute and cool looking and I liked the artistry behind mm -hmm. them. You know, you go on eBay and some of them are worth a pretty penny yeah. now. Uh, yeah, I, I love also the, the mystery minis. Mystery as well. minis are great. Cool. Mystery minis and dorbs. I really like dorbs. Dorbs, only some of them I like. Some of the designs work, some don't. I do think, though, like in terms of when you're talking about value, I think Funko Pops have a, a better chance of, of retaining their value versus Beanie Bays because they are tied with a, like a brand or property that exist and the people love like beanie babies like it's you know it's a beanie baby and it's like i don't know it's like, crazy they how, all look the same they all look the same <laughs> they kind of do it's just crazy how like at one point in time something like that could be the most important thing it's just like thinking about all the things i used to collect as a kid like like beanie babies pogs no okay i remember pogs. okay i like my pog binder is still somewhere in my my parents house in a closet somewhere but like who, did anyone even enjoy playing Pogs? I luckily Pogs for me came out like after, <laughs> like when it would probably be more optimal. Because I think most most of it was like junior high or or elementary school when Pogs were yeah. were like the thing. But at that time, I was already like in high school, so I was, I was so I never young. got into Pogs. I was like dead center in like 
pog target zone okay. and I, i'm a big collector so i always wanted to collect everything that i could as a kid yeah not not so much anymore lies mondo well, posters yeah. <laughs> funko pops i don't know what i'm saying we're moving on to question number five now this one comes from email from anthekin skywalker who writes star lord has shared earth's music with star lord has shared earth's music with his alien pals and gotten them really into it if you join the guardians what movies would you share with them after you watch footloose of course what you got i took a different approach instead of like saying hey I'm going to show them my favorite movies of all time, like Goodfellas of Lawrence of Arabia. I feel like if the aliens have come down, the first thing we need to do is make it so they don't want to annihilate us and kill us. So we okay. got to show them like happy the, stuff. Yeah. Or, or feel good stuff. Okay. So I, 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 I took a look at, you know, what I watched as <laughs> a kid that I really enjoyed. So I wrote down big karate kid, back to the future, star Wars, Goonies, okay. clue, like, more fun stuff, right? Because if you show them something like Goodfellas or Lawrence of Arabia or Godfather or something like that, they're going to be like, oh, humans are bad people. I think we need to eliminate them from the universe. It's funny you take that approach because everything on my list is, like horror, is in violation like, of that. Well, cause, So you want you want the aliens to come down and, and well, uh, annihilate I, us. I really went, you know, okay. w- what if I joined the Guardians? What okay. would I want to share with them? And I would want to share one of my favorite movies ever, and that's Scream. Okay. Just to know what they thought. And then, then I, I put a, a quiet place. Okay, great. So they're going to so eliminate they're, yeah, us after they're, watching they're gonna your movies. They're going to realize that, uh, that it, it's a, a human weak point to have to be silent, yeah. so we're screwed. And then I also put alien. Okay. Also, and then I also yeah, so, put, so you're showing the also, movie that humans are fighting a different species to show them what? To show them that that we are we are we we don't like things that aren't like us. To get to get their probably comedic reaction to what <laughs> human beings think of aliens. And then I also put Wally, which doesn't help us either because it basically makes Earth into a big trash <laughs> heap. I don't I don't know what I was thinking when I put We're this bad, together. Bad people. I swear my last batch of movies is a little better okay. because I, I would want them to know, especially growing up on different planets you know what what childhood is like in uh, or what childhood could kind of be like in mm. heightened versions in movies so i put things like you know mighty ducks mean girls sandlot i would just love to hear the guardians quote mean girls a couple times oh i love mean girls but i, I, I would I'd be afraid the aliens would get a bad impression of uh, of the human race clearly my list would give us give them the worst impression they're of like, humanity they're like should should the humanity live or die uh, after seeing these movies okay and then, then on we, top we, of we, that we i gave it. them like a dozen ideas for how to wipe out humanity so never ask me this question ever we'll go with your list <laughs> okay <laughs> all right that is a wrap on your saturday edition of collider mailbag thanks to everyone who sent in questions thanks to everyone who sent in new artwork the wall behind us is really filling up and it's so exciting keep sending your original artwork to the mailbag address the email address and then we will print it out hang it up behind us Dennis, thank you so much for being here as always. Thank you to everybody who's watching. Please like and share this video and tune in tomorrow morning for another episode of Collider Mailbag. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You wanna watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.